Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation. Well, hello everybody, I'm Hewell Hauser, and here we are on the UCLA campus. This is the older part of the campus here. This is beautiful Royce Hall, which has just been restored to all of its grandeur. This is where UCLA started, right in this area right here. A lot of history here, and speaking of history, Here's Mr. History right here, Dan Einstein. Dan, you are connected with? The UCLA Film and Television Archive. And this man knows all there is to know about television history. He is an expert, and he has invited us here to the campus today. Actually, we're gonna go inside this beautiful building, Powell Library, which mm -hmm. has also been restored. Right. Uh, to see what today, Dan? We're going to look at some television programs in the collection of the UCLA Film and Television Archive in the OID Media Lab in Powell Library there. At the OID Media Lab, so this sounds very official. It's very official. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go inside. It's such a beautiful day, I hate to go into the library. And watch TV. And watch TV, but that's the way <laughs> life is. So let's head inside. Boy, you know, this is the first time I have been in the Powell Library in a number of years, really since it's been restored. It's gorgeous now. It's one of the most beautiful buildings I've ever seen. And you're kind of our quick tour guide here. We kind of commandeered you to give us a, no problem. a quick uh, overview, Jim, of what's going on in here. Well, the building was reopened in 96. It won an award of the best preservation of a building in California, of a historic building that year. And it's, it's really been spectacular. They went to great pains to, um, <laughs> to restore all of the original elements from the brickwork, the tiles, to the hand-painted mosaics up on the ceiling, which... It's um, just beautiful, and it's so open and airy and light in here, too. Yeah, it used to be a fairly dark, dank place. Uh, um, friends of mine who went to school here years ago, I tell them I'm working in Powell, and they say, oh, that's an awful building. <laughs> and they obviously haven't been here since. It's wonderful now. And look down here. This is, uh, has a beautiful look to it down here, too. Oh. Totally different from the other room. Sure. They do a lot of events in this room here. Speakers, uh, panels, symposia. We've actually done a couple here with the archive. We'll bring people in to talk about television issues related to the media. And they set up a podium over here and chairs, and it's really a wonderful environment to talk. And look at this tile. This is original tile that's been here since the building was built uh, in the 20s. Yeah, they spent four years, about $35 million to restore this building. Now, was this building hurt in the earthquake? Um, it actually suffered some damage, but the preservation of the building started prior to the earthquake. Look at this. This is just great. Yeah. Okay, I have a feeling that's where we're heading right there, Instructional Media Laboratory. That's, right. that's, that's where we're heading. So we're going in to watch some television. Okay, the UCLA Instructional media laboratory and they look to me like there are a lot of there's a lot of stuff going on back here a lot of videotape machines this is where people come to view material in the uh, film and television archives collection uh, the people who work back here stick the tape in the machine and you go out there to your little uh, study carol with a monitor all right well let's can, see uh, what's going on there. back here howdy Hi. what are you looking at here it's basically a film. Uh, I'm supposed to write an essay how Indians are represented in films and compare films from the 50s and from the 90s and basically find the difference between the representation of the Indians. And how do you find which films you want to look at? Is, there, is it cataloged under Native Americans? No, basically it's uh, from uh, the professor and I got you. Give, gives us a list. And he gives you a list. You come in here and check it out. Do you come in here a lot? Yeah, it's basically like third time this week. Great. And what class is this for? English. English. Okay. And you're over here. Oh, you got a picture of the former uh, attorney general there. Yes, that's right. What are you, what are you working on? Um, I'm a graduate student and I'm transcribing this interview for someone who's actually doing a, a biography of John Mitchell. Right. So this is an interview that was done with him on a news program is, years ago? This was on uh, here in LA on Bob Dornan's show in 1971. Oh boy. Yeah. Well, do you find this place uh, helpful when you're doing 
Well, this is the first time I've been here, but uh, everyone has been very accommodating and very helpful. Yeah. Good. Okay. So you're getting a good review so far. What are you looking at over here? Um, uh, college chemistry, chemistry 20L. College chemistry? What is, what is college chemistry doing on the line up over here. There's actually two facilities that, sh um, that supply films for this lab. One of them is the Instructional Media Library and they carry a lot of tapes and films that are geared towards uh, undergraduate education. So whether it's chemistry, uh, anthropology, English, whatever the course, they supply some, some tapes up here too. They have a collection of I think around five, six thousand tapes. Boy, I don't know how interesting this one's going to be. Freshman Chemistry Solution Preparation. That doesn't sound... <laughs> Are you excited about watching this? Yes. Oh, okay, well, he's a chemist. He likes chemistry. We're going to come in here and look at old... What are we doing in here? Well, I pulled You're the some, one who invited us I in pulled here. Six come on in, Louie. We're going to close the door, I guess. I pulled about six or seven shows from the collection that I thought would be good represent, representative samples from the collection and good, fun things to look at. So uh, it'll give you an idea of what kinds of things we have in the television archive here. Does it have to be this dark in here? I feel like I'm in a cave. <laughs> well, well, I, I guess we want to watch television. Screen. That's television. right. Yes, yeah, right. <laughs> My song, they cut out. <laughs> now we've got our first tape in here. And what are we looking at and why did you choose it? Because I assume every tape you've chosen to show us today, there's a reason why you, you want to talk about it. Well, to be perfectly honest, I chose this one because it's one of my very favorite shows here. It's a Jack Benny program from uh, September, no, from October of 1953. Jack Benny's special guest is Humphrey Bogart, who is coming in right now. Ah. And they're doing a wonderful uh, takeoff on a uh, dragnet type skit here. Now, this was done on film. This was done live. Oh, it was done live. It was done live and uh, recorded on a kinescope. And how did you get hold of this? One of the first collections that came to the archive many, many, many years ago, before I even arrived here, uh, was the Jack Benny collection. Jack Benny gave uh, the university his collection of television and radio programs. And uh, it was probably about the first major collection that the television archive uh, received. Boy, that is a major collection. So any, anyone who's studying Benny, this is the place to come. Would come here and have his whole collection, his radio programs as radio well. Radio programs as well. There's about 230 or 240 television programs that go from 1950 to 1965. And how many of those have you personally watched? Dan? Well, I'll tell you, when I, when I first came here in 1976 as a volunteer when I was going to school, the first job that they gave me was to catalog the Jack Benny shows. That's not a job. No, no. And Jack Benny is my favorite of all time. And I just thought, I've, I've died and gone to heaven. So uh, I've looked at a lot of these. And 23 years later, you're I'm still, still here. Adam, and I've seen this skit, I don't know how many times. And I, it, it's as fresh and as wonderful the first time, or as the first time I saw it. All right, let's take it out and put in another one. Second tape. Second tape. This is kind of interesting because I have no yeah, idea no what idea. you prepared no. for us. Let's hope it comes up. There we go. There we go. Oh, uh, I recognize that. That's the Nixon Khrushchev, the famous kitchen, kitchen debate, debate in Moscow in 1959, exactly. I think it was. Exactly. From July of 1959, uh, Vice President Nixon and Nikita Khrushchev were touring a, um, a trade fair that was in Moscow, and they were touring the American Expedi Exposition, and they stopped in front of an, uh, 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 an exhibit of Ampex. Uh, Ampex um, and RCA color uh, television equipment and had this kind of impromptu debate that became very, very famous. Um, Nixon talking about how great American technology was, right. Khrushchev, Khrushchev saying, saying the same thing we're going to catch Soviet up and That's surpass right. you and wave bye-bye. That's right, exactly. See, I, I remember that. <laughs> well, I was a small child, but right. I do remember that. Now, well, why is this important? It's important because this is one of the prime artifacts of the Cold War. It really, really is. And you look at this and you can see history coming right out at you. Um, Where'd you get this? 
This, uh, this we preserved from the original color tape. The color tape was held in the Library of Congress, and uh, we got it. And it's part of our preservation program. We do a lot of preservation of, of television shows as well as motion pictures. So you restored this and enhanced it and we made brought, it really, it really shine. We brought it back to uh, its original glory, yes, right. Nobody has seen this in color uh, before we had done this in, in its kind of vibrant color in years and years and years. Now very quickly and easily, I want you to let your mind go forward in time until you can see a picture or feel a sensation or sense something in any way. And as soon as you can, speaking quite clearly, tell me what you can see, feel, or sense. Now, this is... Adventures in Hypnotism from 1957, a local show uh, from Channel 13 in Los Angeles. Adventures, Adventures in, in Hypnotism. hypnotism. Now, so they would actually hypnotize someone on the air? They hypnotize people on the air. And the reason I chose this one to follow the Nixon Khrushchev one is because this man is hypnotized and he's going into the future and the Russians have invaded and he's the only one left and he's fighting the Russians. Sounds like a twilight zone to me. Kind of, yes. But the reason I think this is so fascinating and, and I mentioned with the Nixon Khrushchev, the Cold War, is you can see how deeply ingrained the Cold War mentality and the fear was, if somebody's hypnotized and he's, and he's going through this kind of thing, how deep was that fear in the 50s of the Cold War? So your programs, when you're looking at them, have all kinds of layers to exactly. them. Political, sociological, mm -hmm. psych, you know, Everything. The psychology of the time. Yeah. You, can, you can learn so much about the time that the program was produced, the people, the, the way society was, the changes that have come about uh, by watching uh, old and new television. It's, it's, a, it's a mirror of what our society is. How long did this show last on Channel 13? I really don't know. This is the only one of them I've ever seen. <laughs> I don't imagine it lasted very long. This but, may have uh, been it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't imagine it was too expensive to produce because you can kind of see the little uh, cheap plastic garden chair there. Uh, well, they're plus we've on. stayed on this one guy's face <laughs> for three minutes here That's with right. his eyes closed, kind of mumbling about communism. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Pontiac Star Parade, 58216, Sandberg, Section 12, Scene 2, Take 2. What was that? Well, I mentioned our preservation program here at UCLA. One of the other programs that we preserved was a Gene Kelly special from 1959 with Carl, with Carl Sandberg. Sandberg. And as well, uh, in addition to the actual show, we got a reel of outtakes that has a couple of uh, takes of this one number with, with Gene Kelly and, uh, and Carl Sandberg uh, attempting to sing Turkey in the Straw. And Carl Kelly Sandberg playing and singing Turkey in the... Wait a minute, yeah. here he is. Wait a minute, let's watch this. Gene, it was a good tune to dance to, and he said it was a natural, as good as they come. And uh, tonight, yeah, tonight I may be starting a whole new career in a vaudeville act. <laughs> as I was a guine... All right, let's stop. Was... Let's stop and go once right away again. Once right away again. So that was an outtake. That's an outtake. So, boy, I tell you what, you got to have nerve to stop Carl Sandburg in mid-sentence <laughs> singing Turkey in the Straw. I know, I know. Goodness gracious. Yeah. So here's another take of it. Are we going to do our encore? Sure we are. Come on, Charlie. Does he ever sing it? Yes, there's another, uh, another mistake, and then finally they get it right. Uh, um, <laughs> now, who would be interested in seeing this take? Oh, I, I mean, what, what classes, what students, what scholars, how would this fit into... Well, I mean, you have Carl Sandburg, one of the preeminent uh, writers and poets of, uh, of the 20th century. You've got Gene Kelly, who's certainly one of the, the top uh, dancers in motion picture and television history. So on that level alone, it's, it's just fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also a, a way of seeing Carl Sandburg that we've never, we've seen, never him seen him before. never seen him before, no, uh-uh. No. So exactly. you would have English students in here. You would have. Uh, there he goes. Fire team and a heavy load, crack my whip, and the leader sprung. I says, day day to the wagon tongue. Turkey in the straw, turkey in the hay. Roll him up, twist him up, a high chuck off. Hit him up a tune called Turkey in the Straw. 
You can play it until you're 80 because your lips are the last thing to wrinkle. Dinah Shore and... Benny Goodman. Oh, my God. From the Dinah Shore Chevy Show from the very early 60s. And this is part of a whole collection you have? Do you have the Dinah Shore collection? We have collection? some Dinah Shore shows. We, this summer, uh, presented a, a screening at the Television Academy called Dinah Shore, the NBC Years in conjunction with the Academy and a company called Research Video, which does have the Dinah Shore shows. And Research oh, boy, Video and UCLA uh, preserved a number of Dinah Shore shows. And we took excerpts uh, for about a 75-minute program of clips of Dinah singing with everybody from Benny Goodman to Frank Sinatra to Nat King Cole to Mahalia Jackson. Wonderful, wonderful stuff yeah. in color. Uh, for the pe people who have seen this in black and white, People haven't seen this in color since it was originally broadcast. Now, why would Dinah Shore be important to, to, to watch her shows? Well, aside from being, you know, one of the most talented and, and gracious women on television, Dinah was extremely popular. She is a prime example of a woman uh, uh, who had a very, very popular show for many, many years in a time when women didn't have such, po you know, women weren't as popular as men in terms of television programs. So really, again, this is a way of kind of through the medium of television, mm -hmm. understanding what the country was like at any particular given time. Right, exactly. And to be able to see performers like Benny Goodman and Jimmy Durante and Groucho Marx, who are no longer with us, but to see them in their prime um, is just, it's just a real treat. Yeah. My love for you will drive me to ruin After you've gone, after you've gone away Okay, now it gets real exciting because we've left the Powell Library. We've come to a, another location on the UCLA campus. We're about two levels down, actually, into the ground right. in kind of a... We're in the catacombs here. Yes, it's called the Southern Regional Library Facility. It's where the archive stores its uh, film and tapes. And, and here's the lady standing here behind. This looks like serious business it is here. Very serious, great security here. You don't let just anybody in. That's correct. People have to be bonded, in fact, to work here in this part of the building. You're kidding. No. Well, we're not bonded. Well, we're going to. We are, and we're going to let you in. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Your name is? Claire Belanti. I'm the director of well, the facility. Let us in. This is, oh, man, you can feel the cold air in here. Why do you keep it so cold? Colder temperatures and lower humidity uh, help preserve materials, especially film. Uh -huh. And we maintain this section of the building at 60 degrees Fahrenheit and 45% relative humidity. And to say you have film in here is an understatement. That's correct. There are about 30,000 square feet of, of uh, shelving area here and they're um, mostly filmed, filled with film. Okay, we have film here, we have television. Are you all the TV guys? <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> okay, where do you, what is all of this we're looking at? Um, these are the materials that the UCLA Film and Television Archives has deposited here so that they can be stored in relative safety, as I'm sure Claire was explaining to you. And it's your job to... It's my job to make sure that we can find everything. <laughs> <laughs> this is basically where you keep everything, Dan. This is where everything except our nitrate film, which is stored uh, in Hollywood in special nitrate vaults, this is where everything else is kept. And it's temperature and humidity controlled. Um, it's very nice and clean. It's earthquake proof, so they say. It's cataloged. So it's cataloged and inventoried. Everything is barcoded so we can find it when we need it. And how much stuff do you have down here? How much TV do you have down here? Well, I don't know in, in terms of real count, but I know that in terms of programs, we have about 70,000 television programs in the television collection. Really? Mm -hmm. Dating back to? 1946 to yesterday. Really? Mm -hmm. All right, I see where, well now you've got empty shelves here. Right. So this is what's gonna be? We've got a lot of room to expand and that's one of the wonders of this place. It's gonna be great. Well, this is old stuff. This is old stuff and what we're, We've come right to uh, some KCET material. 
What, what have you got from, oh, you've got Hollywood Television Theater Hollywood from television KCET. Theater from the early and mid-1970s. Some wonderful productions that KCET did. The Bing Crosby Show. Uh, I'm just looking, Family Affair. Uh, Hamlet. Perry Como Show. Some of these I've never heard of no. before. <laughs> but uh, the Brady Bunch. The Brady Bunch, got to have those. The Walter Winchell File. Mm -hmm. um, Art Linkletter. Is it art if I take one of sure, these go out? Ahead. Art Linkletter and the kids. Right, that's when Art would have those kids on and interview them and kids say the darnest things. So this just, look, here's the Steve Allen show up here. Right, we have a whole lot of, we've got a lot of Steve Allen shows from the mid-1960s. Marshall Dillon. Mm -hmm. Here's one called Tap Day for Kitty. Tap Day for Kitty. Miss Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> so really, hear the gun smoke. You really do have everything in here. Well, we don't have everything, but we try. We've got a good, uh, a good balance of things here. We've got an awful lot of stuff. Now we've taken kind of a little side trip. Claire is giving me a tour of the... The news and public affairs information. This in here is KTLA news recording. So you just record the news right off the air. That's right. That's what the archive does. Oh, my gosh. This is KABC, 60 Minutes, CBS Morning News, Sunday Morning. You've got it all. It's all here. Now, you can't record all the newscasts that no. go on the air. No, we record uh, the three network nightly newses, nightly newses, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we record some of the uh, local news, uh, but not everything, of course, no. Just uh, to give future researchers a way of these coming and, and just kind of getting a look at right. what would have been going on how television would have reported right. the news on any certain day of the year. Right, and for example, when the, uh, the, the, the uh, riots were a few years ago and the earthquake, we just recorded night and day uh, a lot of the local stations, so we've got like the complete re reportage of some of those significant events. And what you end up with is not only the events themselves, but the way mm -hmm. they were reported, which right. is a story in itself, right? Sure. If you look at a television newscast from 1975 or something, which it really is not that long ago, and compare it with now, it's just a totally different thing. Yeah. It's completely different in the, the graphics and the, and the sophistication and all of that. Or the sensitivity. And the sensitivity, sure. The political correctness. Mm -hmm. All the things that come and go from decade to decade. Right. It all changes, and it's valuable to have that record of the change. Well, you are sitting on a gold mine here. We know. <laughs> I mean, really, you've got the whole history of television it's right here. Exci it's very exciting to be a part of this operation. How far, where does this stop, Dan? Where do you, when do you, I mean, there's so much television, there's mm -hmm. so many channels, there's so much programming. Right. You could fill this building up in a day if you put everything you in here. How could. do you decide what you're going to put in here and what you're not? Well, we just take everything that film and television has selected as the as something that they want to add to their so collection. So you just get the material. Get How do you it. decide what to send her? Well, an awful lot of it bec uh, is a result of people coming to us and saying, we have this, would you like it? And a lot of it is we go out and look for, for material. For example, one of the recent things that we've gotten that I don't think has even come up to you guys yet is some Dick Van Dyke shows. We have one-inch tapes of, of, I think, every Dick Van Dyke show episode that we got from the company from uh, Calvada Productions. But at some point, you have to decide what is important to keep and exactly. what's not important to keep mm -hmm. because, I mean, television is just, it's, it's, endless. it's endless. Right, right. Well, it's a difficult question, and it's one that uh, the philosophers are pondering all the time. <laughs> Well, you've only got so much room down here. Eventually, That's you're going right. to run out if he keeps sending you everything. <laughs> we actually, though, this is phase two of three scheduled buildings that will eventually hold 11 and a half million volume equivalents. So we still have a ways to go. We have enough, uh, enough for about 10 more years before we need to build the yeah, third phase. Yeah, but TV is just getting going. We're just, <laughs> right. I mean. Well, when we fill up this room, the other building will be open, and then we'll just move right in yeah. there, and then 
We'll just keep going. <laughs> well, it's a wonderful thing you're doing, and it is tucked away here in this facility. Mm -hmm. It's not tucked away where we were earlier, no. where people can call. We'll put a number on the screen now mm -hmm. to find out about how they can access some of this, see right. some of this wonderful old footage, so that it's not just hidden away and preserved. Right. It's actually made available for the public, for people who are doing research and and exactly. doing scholarly things to, to look mm -hmm. at television, which has been such a, a large part of our life for 50 years now. Exactly. And we have public programs as well. We do television screenings at the Television Academy a few times a year, uh, like the Dinah Shore show I was telling you about and the Gene Kelly show. We showed those a few years ago. So the public can go see television, uh, not on the campus, but in a beautiful theater as well. Okay, you do a good job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Do you need us to send you food or anything down <laughs> here? Or do you want to send messages <laughs> out to your family? You do get out. Once in a while, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dan, this has been great. Thank you. This has been fun. The UCLA Film and Television Archive, very much a part of our community and really doing a wonderful job in preserving this rich, uh, I was going to say the rich television heritage, but <laughs> all of our television heritage, some of it is course. richer than <laughs> other, but it's all part of television, for right. better or worse. And years from now, 100 years from now, 200 years from now, people will actually, well, we're going to donate this tape of this program to you. Mm -hmm. So you'll be putting it, this show somewhere mm -hmm. on the shelf. Somewhere. And some years from now... Someone's Long oh, after yeah. we're gone, <laughs> Long after. someone will come and say, wow, look at those old fuddy-duddies talking about right. television in its infancy. <laughs> That's right, exactly. It's all part of history, never-ending. It's part of our television heritage. With my baby by by and by with my baby That's strange. What's strange? I'm so crazy about you, but that kiss didn't affect me at all. That's funny. I'm a wreck. <laughs> See you later, Jack. Uh, don't forget. Marilyn, don't forget dinner tonight. I won't. At 8 o'clock. I'll remember. <laughs> Marilyn, come back here a minute. Please come back. Marilyn. Give me one more kiss before you go. Hey, wait a minute. You're not Marilyn Monroe. Well, you ain't no Errol Flynn. <laughs> Visiting with Hewell Hauser is made possible through a generous grant from the Ralph M. Parsons Foundation.